Hi everybody, I hope you're all well. Uh, it's been a busy, busy week for me. I've had the week off work. I've sort of been here, there and everywhere. Um, uh, the key news, uh, I had my day in hospital following me being ill a couple of months ago and I got the all clear. So yay! all is good um so yeah i just um need to carry on being careful with what i eat and such but other than that no more follow-up nothing of concern i'm good <laughs> so um the rest of this week i've just been um relaxing you know just uh, just taking the rest of the week off because obviously i hadn't really booked i hadn't booked anything to go away in that because i didn't know um I, I didn't know if possibly that hospital appointment could turn out a different way and therefore um, I wouldn't be able to go away and such. But um, I did end up uh, booking a night in Bristol. So I um, so I, I spent the day in Bristol on Thursday and then came back, um, stayed overnight Thursday, came back Friday. So that, that was nice. I haven't really explored Bristol before. I mean, I've been there multiple times, but when, I, when I've been, it's because I'm going to a specific place, um, like Bristol Hippodrome or somewhere with work. And one of my, the company I work for, they've got an office in Bristol. So it, it's very much more work related rather than, rather than pleasure. Um, so yeah, it was, it was actually nice to explore the place, looked around the cathedral, looked around the shops and everything and just had a relaxing time it was really really lovely and it was my birthday I spent um a birthday with my mum and dad had a lovely uh lunch out uh, at uh Mowgli and um which is in uh, like an indian street food restaurant um which my whole family love we absolutely love it there um but yeah, and I just had a really lovely time. So I am officially 38 now. Um, <laughs> see how often I, I slip up. Uh, <laughs> still thinking that I'm 37. We'll see. We'll see. No, I'm 38 now. Um, but yeah, that's what I've been up to this week. And I'm really, really glad that tomorrow I've got the day off. So I don't actually go back to work until Tuesday. So I've got an extra day to relax and just chill and do whatever, which is going to be lovely. But anyway, enough about me. Let's talk about the book I have been reading this week, which is Five Little Pigs by Agatha Christie. So this is a Hercule Poirot book, and it's one where I never read it before, but I knew the story very well because of the ITV drama starring David Suchet. That drama is so well put together. I absolutely love it um and so uh, when i was in york yes it was um when i was in york in october um i went to the waterstones that was there and it was there and i thought screw it i'm gonna buy the book so i did and now i finally read it now what's really good is that with this particular design it lists all the hercule poirot books and it shows you where five little pigs sits in the collection so i re i really like that so it's um sort of in the bottom sort of two third points in going into the the final third of the book's collection um so we already know quite a bit about poirot at this point but i find this one so interesting for a multitude of reasons but first let me explain what the book is about so five little pigs uh follows a story of a woman who uh, her husband died it was determined that he was poisoned and as she um what happened is that he was working he's a painter he uh, it's a lovely summer's day there's a group of a group of them having having a day together and he asks for a drink she brings him a bottle of beer and they he drinks it she goes inside comes out a while later he's dead he's been poisoned and of course she was the one who brought the, the bottle of beer it's determined that he drank the poison and her fingerprint is on the glass that he drank from so that's why we've got design of class uh, of glass and fingerprints all over the place um and so she is sent to prison for his murder she is at first going to be executed but her sentence is changed to life in prison but she died a year later of pneumonia 
they had a five-year-old daughter who is sent away to live with her aunt and uncle in Canada. Fast forward 16 years, that little girl is now 21 and she uh, it's she's officially an adult, <laughs> as it were. She's become a woman um, and she gets a letter saying, happy 21st birthday. By the way, your mum was completely innocent. Um, she didn't murder your dad. So happy birthday. <laughs> and she's like, what the actual fuck? Um, so she gives the letter to Poirot and says, please help me. I need to know the truth. And then Poirot goes off and investigates. So it's 16 years after the crime. Uh, it's not often that we get things like this happens with Poirot. It's very much the murder has just happened uh and he gets caught up in it or it's it's like maybe like a month or two so like quite a short amount of time not 16 years so it feels like a very different um story in general uh and so yes so Poirot uh with his psychic hastings uh goes to try and find out what happened now as I said I really um I really love this story for a multitude of reasons but in particular I really find it interesting how Agatha writes this one. Now the way this is written is not going to be liked by everyone, I can tell you that for a start. Because straight away, obviously because it's been 16 years, uh, Poirot has to track down all five people uh, the, the, who were there, apart from obviously the, the main uh, couple who are now deceased, um, and find out their accounts but it means that you get a lot of information thrown at you. Okay, Agatha has that in general in her books, but it's very much that you usually, because of the murder has just happened, you have very much things that she's throwing at you are in real time with the, with the case. Whereas this one, it's, it's a 16 year gap. So you, it, it's that constant thing of you're getting information the entire day and build up to that day and such from one person then the same for another then another then another then another and then you have him right he has each of the um people write their account and then you get the written account and it's one two three four five so you get their accounts multiple times and it kind of i can understand that some people might find that a bit frustrating um but it's really really important because of the thing of who who is possibly lying who is possibly slipping gonna slip up where their accounts don't quite tie and of course agatha does what she does best where she leads you down the path and you think with a with a thing of okay it looks like it's this person and she goes no nope, red herring and just completely throws you back um i just i just really really love Agatha for that but also what I find so interesting is that this one Poirot feels different now Poirot obviously because he's a, he's a detective he's he has his particular ways that he likes to do things and usually as mentioned it's he is in uh, he's the murder has just happened so he is very much involved from either straight from the beginning or not long after the beginning of of the whole situation this time he's got a 16 year gap so he's very much out of his comfort zone and so because of that he feels more um human i don't i'm not sure if that's the right word to use but what what i mean is that usually he goes into these things and he's very much he processes things he looks at things he he's trying to tick boxes you can see the cogs working in 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 his head but this time he has he's actually he's debating with himself about things he's going okay can i believe this can i what because of the relationship between our victim and the person who went down for that victim's murder and this other person is it possible that that is likely that that discussion happened can you i mean obviously he he need he does debate with himself about things like that 
throughout the books but it feels like this one he's debating with himself more and more or at least that's how I feel and I love that though it kind of shows more of a vulnerability to Poirot in a sense um and I, I don't think I've seen or at least thinking of the Poirot books that I have read um I don't think we have seen him in that way apart from you could possibly say uh, murder on the Orient Express with the whole debate uh, w once we know and I'm not going to say what because obviously what that is because obviously spoilers but once we know what we know the debate about what should happen next is really interesting but it feels with Pyro and the tussle between what is right and justice and just the decent thing to do and it feels like that debate that he has at the end of that book he has all the way through this so it just feels very different for Poirot for me um and I loved that I really loved it now as always Agatha does some beautiful work in this book absolutely gorgeous and I love especially how she describes characters and um so for example um uh, uh our, our our lady who who gives the letter to paro and says um you know i've received this letter please help me she's she's described as being so um elegant and youthful yet there is a sternness to her there is this this like core in her not stone-hearted or anything but it just feels like she's become tough because of what's happened to her and I don't need to know like the colour of her hair and such that tells me so much there's another character who Poirot has heard about and now he's going because obviously 16 years later he's going to meet that person and the way Agatha like the beginning of the chapter says something like um Poirot saw that he was, um, I'm paraphrasing, uh, Poirot saw that he was exactly how he was described, tall, but arrogant, uh, narcissistic, you know, that kind of thing. She doesn't describe anything about the colour of his hair, the cut of his hair, what he's wearing, how tall he is, eye colour, none of that. It's, you know, arrogant, narcissistic, straight back, just cringe having a having a drink and not giving a shit about the world and i'm like yes queen yes i love it i love it when agatha does that um because she's like yeah i'm not gonna give you the stuff that you don't need to know i'm not gonna you you this is what I, this is the stuff i want to present to you and her confidence in doing that as a writer is just a oh, chef's kiss i love it um the pacing of the book as i said because of this feels quite different because of the 16 year gap i can understand that some people might find this one difficult to read um but for me i i i didn't mind it too much i was sort of stopping and starting because i was as i said you know i've had a busy i've had a busy week i was sort of going here there and everywhere uh and such so in a way i kind of my pattern of the week kind of reflected the pattern of this book um uh with the multitude of of um accounts of this particular day that happened and the build up and such um but there is an underlying like real darkness to this book and i think maybe that's why what attracts me to this story that there's 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 something really sinister going on under the water i'm just going to check something just bear with me one moment um right okay so this was quite a bit after murder in the orange express i'm just trying to see like the the, the order of the books and such um yeah okay so it's after de uh, death on the nile and it did make me think of the yeah the underscore darts and now but also abc murders abc and abc murders is is quite a bit above so yeah it, it feels like there is some kind of real 
darkness here and it's the first book after evil under the sun and that's a really interesting one um so yeah it kind of feels like agatha was it, having like a real sinister underground and i love the fact that the um the the woman uh, the the wife who um went down for the murder uh, that she, the a main defence, a, a reason why she should be, uh, not defence, but you know what I mean, I can't think of the word, um, the main reason why it, it would show that she would get, she would have issue and therefore kill her husband was that she had anger issues. She had um, hurt someone previously. Um, she wasn't one to keep her mouth shut. She said how she felt and it made me think of other books where they have done similar thing of going of going well it's clearly that person because they've done xyz and the first thing that came to mind was silkworm by robert galbraith aka jk rowling where the wife of the victim um the police and the press go after because she had worked in a butcher shop when she was younger as a teenager, mm -hmm. she worked in the family butcher shop, and that's it. And it's and is that thing just because a certain situation happened that does not mean that they are capable of then doing the crime that they are being linked to. And yeah, I just love that. I I, I love the fact that Agatha takes situations of people, ordinary people, and goes it's not always what it seems it, that is just fundamentally i love her for doing that and she looks at the depth of um human nature psychology psychology is mentioned quite a bit in this book um and adds her usual extraordinary writing and finesse to make a brilliant story and a fantastic um mystery to try and solve and yeah it felt very different. It was a very different story. Um, but overall, I absolutely loved it. I thought it was great. It's not going to be everyone's cup of tea because of the structuring and such. I totally recognise that. But my God, she really does put you through a lot in this book. And um, I'm really happy that she did that. <laughs> so thank you, Agatha, for putting me through the ringer for during the course of Five Little Pigs. Now, as I mentioned, the uh, drama, the David Suchet drama from the ITV um, Poirot collection, which I forgot to bring downstairs to hold up for you, um, they uh, that one is very well adapted. However, in reading this book, I went, oh, they did that differently in the drama. Oh, they changed that. So there are differences, but overall, it doesn't destroy the story. It's not like they've completely changed uh, who did it, why they did it, etc. It's just they've they've explored an element. So, for example, there's a there's a situation between two characters. I'm not going to say um, who they are, um, but in the book, it's uh, there's a man and a woman in the drama it's two men so it, it's not um well not an affair but having feelings um so it, it, it's things like that where they haven't completely destroyed the story they haven't rewritten it or anything they've just simply added something in or tweaked something which is there in the book but not quite in the same way as depicted in the drama but it is so well put together i absolutely love that drama highly highly recommend it i've looked it up on youtube and there are fan-made videos about it and like a 30 second clip or whatever of it but i haven't been able to find a trailer but i'll include that video with the clip in in the description below should you want to view it so there we go those are my thoughts on Five Little Pigs by Agatha Christie. Time for my usual questions. Would I read this again? Yes, 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 definitely. I do love a murder mystery and I have a one in the summer, right when we're, you know, in summer. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, that's that is really lovely. Um, would I read any more of Agatha Christie's work? Well, of course, yes, because she is the queen of crime. I absolutely love her. Uh, and would I recommend this to anyone? Yes, definitely. And it's one of those ones where you can 
pick it up at any time. It's not a thing of there is a underlying um, storyline where it's better like that you read from the beginning of the Pryro collection all the way through. You can pick this up and it should be fi totally fine as a, a singular uh, read. So yeah, definitely recommend it. So those are my thoughts on Five Lost Pigs by Agatha Christie. Have you read this book? I'd love to know what you think. Leave me a comment in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, turn to your lady side. And I'll be back with my thoughts on my next read, which is Our House uh, by Louise Candlish. So let's see how I do with this. All right, everyone. Bye.